Before I get into the story, there are a few things I need to explain about my country, South Africa. In South Africa, it's normal to have high brick walls with electric gates, electric fences, alarms, etc. The crime here is hectic. It's also pretty normal to have big gardens. My family and I are big animal lovers, so at the time we had six dogs, two German short-haired pointers, and two dachshunds. With that being said, our dogs roam freely in and out of the garden, as it's obviously enclosed. We usually leave the veranda door open during the day for them to do their thing. Another thing about South Africa is that it's normal to have a live-in domestic worker, like a maid or a gardener. The average family usually employs them. It's not just for wealthy people. For the story, our domestic worker is Ellie and our gardener is Vince. So this happened in 2007, when I was nine years old. My older brother, who was 10, and I had just gotten our first cell phones that day. My dad surprised us after work. You may think it's a bit young, but it was used for emergencies or to communicate with our parents. Anyway, it's an important piece of information for later. We don't usually leave our veranda door open at night for security reasons, but I remember that it was a hot summer night, so, of course, this night of all nights, the veranda door was wide open and the dogs were doing their thing in the garden. My brother and I were in my parents' room, setting up our new cell phones all excited. Ellie's daughter, Anne, who's like a sister to us, she was 18, was helping my brother and I. My dad was somewhere in the house and my mom was in the bath. I specifically remember Anne having a comment about how the dogs wouldn't shut up and how annoying it was. And that's when I noticed it too. I mean, sure, they would bark, but it was usually the dachshunds that yapped. The bigger dogs just chilled out. Plus, it would only happen for a few minutes and then they'd get over it. Something was different that night. Even the bigger dogs were barking nonstop. My dad appeared in his room and mentioned to us that he too noticed the dogs incessant barking, and he was going to check if everything was okay. No alarm bells went off in my head, and I don't believe my dad thought anything was amiss either, because my brother asked to investigate with him and my dad agreed. I was obviously way too engrossed in my new Sony Ericsson. My dad ventured out to our garden with my brother in tow, when my dad had noticed the dogs were all grouped, growling, and going nuts at a dark corner behind our swimming pool. The best way I can describe it is that the garden beyond the pool hits like a slight decline, so we have a few steps leading down the hill to the bottom end of our garden. We usually have a lamp that lights it up, but my dad noticed how that lamp seemed to be off, which confused him because he could have sworn it was just working. Either way, my dad said that he got this gut-wrenching feeling because of all of this, and just because of how out of character the dogs were acting. He called them, and usually they would come running, but tonight they all seemed to just look at him, then turn back around and continue going crazy at this dark corner down the steps. My dad told my brother to go back inside the house and get a flashlight, sort of using it as an excuse for my brother to not come with him because of this feeling he had. When my brother went back inside to get the torch, my dad was slowly approaching the steps. He noticed how the dog seemed to be snapping at whatever it was, hiding just out of view in the darkness. As he got to the steps, he noticed the lamp was smashed. Confused, he inched toward the steps, and as he put two and two together, it was too late. My dad, being an ex-vet and avid hunter, felt something cold against his temple, and immediately knew it was a gun. Out of the darkness stepped four other men in balaclavas, all armed. Shocked, he stood frozen on the steps. The man holding the gun to his head was instantly aggressive and asked him where my brother was, that he saw my dad come outside with my brother, but that my brother went back into the house. Why? My dad said something came over him and before he knew what he was saying, he responded with, he's gone inside to press the panic button. As he said it, he saw how all of these guys started to panic. 
they started speaking in an African language called Zulu. He assumed that my dad couldn't understand because it's not common for white people to speak it. But my dad had actually grown up on a farm where he learned it fluently because of the farm workers. The aggressive guy holding the gun said in Zulu, Shit, the cops will be here any minute. Let's just kill this effer, grab what we can, and go. The other seemed apprehensive, and a smaller guy seemed really on edge. He continued saying how he can't go back to jail, and they need to get out of there before the cops show up, which would be any minute. He was panicking. My dad then fed on this guy's fear. My dad then interrupted them, speaking English and pretending not to understand what they were saying, and said that we usually have armed response vehicles that drive in our area, and since my brother pushed the panic button so long ago, they'll probably be here any second. And that did it. My dad watched as their plan unraveled before them. The smaller, scared guys started freaking out all the other guys, saying they had to leave right away or they'd be caught. He seemed to make the others more nervous and lose confidence, until they started full-on bickering amongst themselves, their plan slowly turning to crap. The aggressive one pointing the gun to my dad's head slowly lowered it, as they all started fighting, losing focus on my dad and shifting his focus onto the crew. My dad then used this as an opportunity to slowly back up the steps and turn and dart into the house. As luck would have it, my dad ran into the veranda door. My oblivious brother was heading out with a torch. My dad scooped him up under his arms mid-run, sprinted into the house, not even closing the door behind him. Silly, I know, but I think he was just thinking about getting my brother inside. Anne and I were obviously also oblivious to everything when my dad rushed through the bedroom door, slammed it shut, and told us to go upstairs to the attic. There's five guys outside with guns. They're here to hurt us. Get upstairs, now. My heart sank. I remember my body automatically responding and me sprinting to the stairs with Anne right behind. My mom ran out of the bathroom in a towel not too far behind. We sat there in the darkness in silence. I swear you could hear a pin drop. I think we were all just waiting to hear something below us in the rooms. My mom cursed, saying she didn't have a phone. Neither did my dad. But ha, in my hand was my brand new Sony Ericsson. No better emergency to use it in than right now, right? My mom dials the police, and I kid you not, they asked where we lived. We explained, and they said it wasn't in their jurisdiction. Sorry. Click. The line goes dead. We're now not only absolutely shitting ourselves, but we're flabbergasted too. My mom starts cursing like a sailor again, and that's when my dad realizes. Damn. He didn't close the veranda door. And what about Ellie and Vince, who are in their rooms, blissfully unaware of the danger they're in? He gets his firearm in the safe in the attic, and tells us that whatever we hear, we are not to come downstairs. To stay hidden, no matter what. I'm now sobbing, begging my dad not to leave us but he says he has to go get Ellie and Vince before something bad happens to them. Now there are even more tears, because reality hits that there are two other people still in danger. Anne is understandably in hysterics because she's also fearing for her mom downstairs. My dad disappears, and the air is thick with tension. We can still hear the dogs going crazy, indicating that those men were still on our property. My mom then calls another number, the armed security that drives around the area, and they said they'd be over in about 10 to 15 minutes. They said to wait and stay hidden until they ring our bell at the gate. We all wait in silence, fearing that we'll hear a gunshot or something indicating those men are in our house, but there was just silence. The only sound was the dogs barking outside. After what seemed like hours, but was most likely a couple of minutes, we heard stomping coming up the stairs, and my heart rate quickened. I remember shutting my eyes and just praying that it was my dad with Ellie and Vince. Luckily, it was. We all hid for a while and nobody dared to speak. The dogs seemed to have calmed down considerably, but were still barking every now and then. The gate intercom rang, and my dad told us to wait while he checked if it was the security company. And sure enough, it was. He opened up, and the nightmare was over. 
I remember standing up and my knees just buckling from the adrenaline my body had just endured. The armed security somehow notified the right police and everyone investigated the garden. They found that there were actually seven pairs of footprints and that these guys bent the spikes on our wall and just climbed right over. We got an electric fence shortly after that. So there must have been two other guys hiding in the shadows that my dad hadn't seen, which is actually creepy in its own right. South Africa's violent crime is quite bad and it's sickeningly common for torture and other things to happen during home invasions. I was obviously so young at the time, I didn't know the horrors of the world and I was just scared of my family getting hurt. Now that I'm older, just the thought of four women being in the house and my mom being in nothing but a bath towel gives me chills to this day. The cops said that the fact that there were so many guys, instead of like one to three, indicated that these guys possibly had very sinister intentions. Thank goodness nothing happened to my family, and I'm forever thankful for my dad's quick thinking regarding the panic button. Also, I'm so glad my dad understands Zulu and could manipulate the situation to benefit us. Lastly, my family will forever be in debt to our good boys and girls that warned us that night, our dogs. A terrifying and life-changing outcome would have 100% happened that night had it not been for our incredible dogs. From that day forward, my dad always gives them leftover rice or meat with their dinner. Rest in peace to all of you. I'm sure there was a special place in heaven reserved just for you angels. Close to 10 years ago, my best mate and I scored the deal of the century. Liv and her parents recently purchased and refurbished home for cheap as chips rent, so that the property wasn't considered unoccupied and their insurance would still cover it. They were planning on selling their house in the country and moving closer to town in a year. But when they spotted this place, it was perfect, so they snapped it up. They couldn't be bothered dealing with rando tenants for a year, so they offered it to us. Awesome. It was a lovely old mid-Victorian style house with a hallway running the majority of the length on the left side and three bedrooms and a bathroom coming off that hallway to the right. At the back of the house was an open plan living room and kitchen and a backyard. It was in an inner Melbourneian suburb, so it was totally fenced in with six foot fences on three sides. The front had a cutesy white picket fence. On the right side of the property, an outdoor gravel pathway was wedged beside the bedroom walls and the fence line. It began with a gate in the front yard and ran the length of the property to the backyard. My mate obviously scored the master bedroom at the front with lovely vertically opening bay windows facing the front garden and street. I had the next bedroom with a window facing the gravel path and fence. The third bedroom was our study. We lived here for close to 10 months in bliss. Great house, great company, and even though the area was considered a little dicey, the location was great. One hot summer's night, we said our good nights, and I hit the hay and zonked out immediately. My housemate stayed up in bed to read for a bit, with just her bedside light on. She was doing that for just over an hour before she heard this weird scritch scratch on the front window of her bedroom. Initially, she put it down to an overhanging tree branch. That was, until she realized there was no overhanging tree branch. She sat frozen in fear, blankly staring at her book for what felt like an eternity, until she heard the noise again and again. Slowly looking up, she saw a dude wearing a hoodie trying to open her window looking her dead in the eyes while he did it. She screamed, jumped out of bed, and ran straight into my room. I woke up super dazed as she was pulling my hand and whisper yelling that someone was trying to break in. She had a tendency to be a little overdramatic sometimes, but I swear I've never seen somebody look so genuinely terrified. I went to grab my phone to call the cops, but we just went completely still when we heard the distinct crunch crunch 
of someone walking down the side path of the house. We both rolled off my bed onto the floor and went completely still. The crunching continued, getting closer and closer to my bedroom window. I don't know what it was about that distinct sound in the middle of the night when it's otherwise quiet, but it was like it was deafening. And that's when I realized why it was so loud. My window was wide open. I jumped up, slid the window down, and slammed the lock shut just as he reached it. He looked at me, but he didn't react at all. He just calmly tried to open the window, but when he realized he couldn't, he continued down the pathway to the backyard. I was thoroughly losing my mind now, and my housemate was sobbing on the floor, looking up at me like a bunny about to be torn apart by a fox. I sprinted to the back door to thankfully find it locked. I ran back to my room and called the cops. I don't know what the cops knew that we didn't, but they must have broken a land speed record to arrive all of three minutes later, lights and sirens off. We saw them go down the side path, guns drawn, straight to the backyard. There were some noises from the yard, then a knock at the back door a moment later, and the police identified themselves. Turns out the dude had vaulted the back fence, quite an impressive feat, and another patrol car was headed to the next street over to look for him. The two cops at our place asked if we were okay, and then asked if they could come in and look around. Honestly, these cops were amazing. They managed to calm us down whilst making sure that the place was safe, and I was really impressed with how they handled the situation. I offered them a cuppa, which they politely declined, and then they took our statements and asked if there was anybody we could stay with that night. My housemate and I stayed at her boyfriend's place for a few nights after that, and when we stayed at the house, it was just never the same. We felt completely violated, and we ended up moving out a few weeks later. We never did find out if that guy was caught, but there was a random stabbing a few nights after the incident at a train station two streets over. If it was related or not, I don't really know. But all I can think is we were so lucky that that went the way it did. So it's 7 a.m. and I'm idling in a McDonald's parking lot until sunrise. The past few days with an escalating prowler have finally driven me out of my home. I'm a 25-year-old female and I live alone, on the ground floor of some cute condos with lovely neighbors. I work nights, but with the pandemic, work has been seldom. Naturally, I'm used to staying up late. Four nights ago at 2.30 in the morning, I'm watching TV in the living room, and my dog starts growling at the window. She only does this when someone or something is on my patio, and usually it's a cat or a raccoon. I assumed it was an animal outside, until I heard what sounded like somebody trying to open my door. I sat still and listened for more noise, because I just couldn't believe that that was happening. I called my mom because I was feeling weirded out, and then I peeked through my blinds, all of which were closed, by the way, to see the gate to my patio is wide open. I know I shut it, and the wind has never blown it open. I'm still on the phone with my mom, and I get the genius idea to go show whoever it is that I'm not scared, and go latch my gate while making my presence known. I go outside, and there's a man on the walkway near my patio entrance. He was walking away until he heard my door open. He fully turns around to face me and stops, staring. Average looking white guy, hoodie up, hands in his pocket, no bag. Strange, as I first assumed it was just a patio thief. But when he turned around and looked at me, I got a chill. Why would this thief show me his face and make a point of fully turning to face me and stare? I'm shocked and I began walking backwards toward my door to go inside. He turns back around and keeps walking away. He takes three steps, then fully turns around again and stops to stare at me. 
I went inside and stayed on the phone for a couple of hours until I finally fell asleep. I called the non-emergency police and they made a note. After that first weird encounter, I put a long and low to the ground flower pot against my patio gate so it would make a noise if somebody opened it. A couple of nights passed and I didn't notice anyone creeping about. Until last night. Last night at about 1 a.m., I hear a crashing noise. Again, I call my mom for reassurance and I look around the house to see if anything had fallen. I think it must be nothing and I get off the phone. And that is when I suddenly remember my DIY flower pot alarm. I peek through the blinds to see, yet again, my gate is open and the flower pot was knocked over. He came back. I called the non-emergency police line again, and this time they came and did a patrol of the neighborhood, but they didn't catch him. Fast forward to tonight's incident. Needless to say, I'm thoroughly creeped out. I find a deal on some security cameras with motion detecting capabilities. I got to Best Buy just before closing and snagged the last pair in stock. I set those bad boys up and felt pretty safe. 1 a.m. again. I'm running a bath, on the phone with my boyfriend, and I get a motion detected alert from my security cameras. I assume it's just a cat, because I didn't hear the gate crash. I had reset the flower pot system after it was knocked over the previous night. To my horror, I see a man tiptoeing from the side of my patio toward my door, hoodie up, hands in pockets. He knew not to use the gate because it made a noise last night. It was him. He wiggles my door handle. I'm absolutely terrified because he's right there. He's back again. I throw on a long coat and run into the lobby barefoot and call 911. My boyfriend got there before the police did and was running through the back with a baseball bat looking for this creep. Unfortunately for me, and lucky for him, he didn't find him. The police didn't find him either. So I'm sitting here at a McDonald's in the parking lot at 7 a.m. scared to go home. It's just all too creepy, and I know to trust my gut. Why would he turn around and stare the first time? Why would he come back after he knew that I saw him? Why is he so determined to be here? I mean, he hopped the fence to avoid the loud noise of the gate and flower pot. What scares me most is how persistent and undeterred he seems by all of it. What will stop him? What's his end game? Nothing is missing from my patio. Frankly, there's nothing to steal. He never had a backpack or any kind of bag. Just hands in his pockets. I have him trying the door tonight on video, so hopefully that will help him get caught. I just wish I understood the psychology of guys like this. I mean, honestly, what can I do? I'm staying at a friend's house for a few days and I'll be monitoring the cameras closely. This happened four years back. I was about 14 years old, and my parents were out and had left me and my little sister, who was 10, home alone. It was about 10 or 11 p.m. when the lights go out. This used to happen sometimes in my country, since it's a newer country and we're really poor. But that time, I noticed something out of the ordinary. Only the lights in our house were out. My neighbor's lights were on. I had a really bad feeling, so I quickly locked all the doors and closed the blinds. I told my little sister to hide behind the couch and to not go out whatever happened. I hid somewhere else with a knife and tried to call my mom. She didn't pick up, so I waited. I thought it was over, so I get out of my hiding place and I head to the kitchen, where we had the back door, to go look out the window. Before I get close, I hear the doorknob turning. It doesn't work, so the person on the other side now tries violently to open the door. That's when I panicked and shouted, Who are you? Get the F away from my house. I've called the police. I hear footsteps and then nothing. I went to the other room and looked out the window 
and I saw somebody running out of my backyard. My sister was crying, so I comforted her while we stayed hidden until my parents came home after about an hour. We told them everything, and my dad said that whoever it was, he had intentionally cut the house's electricity to scare us. To this day, every single time the electricity goes out, I get kind of scared. I'm just really glad we're okay.